What's up y'all, it's Kyle here at Laser Everything, and today we are taking a look at Viper's upcoming update, version 1.7, and we are going to be digging into specifically the QR and barcode tool that's coming out with a little bit of a revamp. The importance of barcodes and QR codes for a lot of people is going to be an important one. Alright, so here we are in Lightburn. Now, you'll notice that this is 1.6.03, which is the current build as of the time of recording at least. This is the most up-to-date version of Lightburn. Now, if I go up to Tools, what you guys will see is the old version of the QR code generator. Generally, you could just stick a website here, click OK, and you have a functioning QR code. For a lot of people, this is really limiting. With that, uh, Lightburn has added support for something like over 20 different barcode and QR code, data matrices, tons of different stuff in the upcoming update. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to 1.7 beta release right now, and we're going to take a look. Here we are, version 1.7 for the release candidate. This might change a little bit because this is a, a release candidate. It's not actually released yet, but we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go up to create a barcode here. They changed the name of the tool. It's no longer the QR code. It is barcodes now. And you'll notice that the icon has also changed. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag and drop like we did before. And we have our QR code like we had before. The difference is we now have this drop down up at the top. Just look through what's available. There are lots and lots of options here. So for a lot of you guys who have been generating barcodes using text, in some ways, depending on the type of barcode that you were using as a font, you may not have to go that route anymore. I know a lot of the times that required a lot of manual manipulation and testing to make sure it was working. You may be able to get around that now. I would still test them, but it may be a lot easier now. We also have three different kinds of barcodes here. We can kind of scroll through these. And I found an interesting one here. We actually have ISBN support. So for a lot of people, this is really important, particularly if you're doing work with libraries or a publisher. Let's go ahead and dig into the QR code tool here. It works just as it did before. I'm just gonna go ahead and paste in a QR code here that I actually need to do for a project anyway. And I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Now for all intents and purposes, this works just like it did before. The key difference here is that you can double click on the QR code you generated and you can change to just different types of stuff. There are data checks in place. So if you generate a code that isn't going to conform to the rules of that type of code, you're gonna get a warning letter. So for example, if I go to ISBN, you're going to see that there is an error because we have an invalided character in the data. It is expecting a certain number of characters in a certain order, and specific character numbers need to be a certain value or selection. There are some, some checksums, you could say, in this, uh, which is fantastic. For a lot of you where maybe this isn't the type of stuff that you do, you might just do a QR code every now and again for a sign or a business card. It works the same as it did. But for the people who do those varying types of businesses where data matrices or different types of barcode types are very important, this has just made your job a whole lot easier. That said, I'm going to go ahead and continue with my project here. We're going to validate that it works. I'm just grouping this up so we get our alignments just right. And let's go ahead and center this using the hotkey P just like it did before. Now we got this centered up. I'm gonna go ahead and run this project, but I also need to apply my settings to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply my settings. We're just using aluminum white finish. So this is on the Wisely 60 watt M7 JPT Mopa 200 lens. These are the settings we're using. 750 speed, 23 power, 45 frequency, 0.025 line interval, like always. Let's go ahead and dig in. With side A done, I'm going to go ahead and move that over. We're going to do side B now. Same settings, just uh, flipping the card over and running it again. Mm -hmm. 
And that is one mini project done and dusted. Big thanks to Rax for letting me share his project with all of you. And big thanks to all of you for watching. If you enjoyed and got value out of it, smash the subscribe and the bell icon so you get notified the next time we upload an updated video or a project or next time we go live. Smash that like button while you're down there. It means a lot to us and it helps get the video in front of more people who might gain value out of it. If you really enjoyed the video, check out the LMA or check out the communities link down below in the description. And if you're looking for business cards like this to engrave on your own, I will also include a link to that down there as well. Big thanks to all of you for watching and to the LMA subscribers for supporting what we do. And we'll see you in the next one.